TA Grade 12. I am Mrs. V. Ramla. Welcome to the Junior Tucky Winter School for Grade 12s. There will be a series of videos which will be live streamed in the next few weeks on Junior Tucky Online. Please use this material as revision and also look at all the Grade 12 content in Life Sciences on Junior Tucky Online. Before we get down to looking at the exam paper, let us look at what will be in the Life Sciences Paper 1 at the end of the year and in your prelims. Right, let's look at the paper one topics. This is work that will be covered in term one, two, and three. Now, if we look, reproduction in invertebrates will be eight marks, human reproduction, 41 marks, responding to the environment will be 54 marks, that includes the nervous system, the eye, and the ear, responding to the environment by plants will be 13 marks, and then finally, endocrine and homeostasis will be 34 marks. Right, so that will be your breakdown of your paper. You will have this paper, paper one, which will be two and a half hours long. Right, let's look at the structure of the life science paper. You will have section A. Section A will have multiple choice questions, terminology, your matching items with different columns and statements. That will be 50 marks. And that is the 50 marks that you must try to really attain so that you can do well in your exams. Section B will have two questions of 50 marks each. So it'll be a question two and three, 50 marks each. And this is where you can find your level for questions. Now, I have a little treat for you. I am going to discuss the life sciences supplementary paper that was written uh, in May 27th or 28th. Right, now the supplementary paper is a bit more difficult and it's very good preparation for your final exam. When I looked at the supplementary paper, I was actually astounded at the level of the questions. There were many questions that were quite tricky. So I'm glad that I have the opportunity to discuss the question with you. So in this video, we're going to just be looking at the supplementary paper, paper one, section A. All right, now let's get down to the terminology. Now, very important, remember we must look at the instruction. We always read the instructions. So, give the correct biological term for each of the following descriptions. Write only the term next to the question numbers. So your question numbers, you must write them down and then only a term you must write down. Spelling is important here, so please sound out your words so that you can make sure that you can achieve the marks. One to one. A structure in the ear that absorbs excess pressure from excess pressure waves from the inner ear. Now we must look at the structure in the ear that absorbs excess pressure waves. Yeah, this question has come out a lot in the matric exams in the past few years. Please can I ask that you make a note of this. We know that one to one is the round window. So both those words, they ask the structure, so you can't just say round, you have to say round window. Right, one, two, two, the structure in the sperm that contains enzymes. Again, this is a question that has come out in so many exams. So by now, you should know how to spell. This answer is the acrosome, right? 1.2.3. The site of fertilization in human female, in the human female. So where does um, sorry, where does fertilization take place in the human female? It takes place in the fallopian tube. You can use the word oviduct. Oviduct is quite an older word, so let's get used to using the word fallopian tube. One to four. A visual defect caused by the uneven curvature of the cornea. And this also. These top four questions, these first four questions, have come out a lot. So again, don't go into your exam without knowing this. Uneven curvature of the cornea, that is astigmatism. Please, Junior Takis, learn how to spell. That's very important. If you spell, you, it doesn't help you now that you know the word, but you cannot spell it because you're going to get marks for writing the word down. So please, can I plead with you to learn to spell while you are studying the words? One, two, five. The nerve that transmits impulses from the eye to the brain. That's very easy. From the eye to the brain, we know it's the optic 
nerve. Please concentrate when you're writing the nerve questions. For too many years, I've seen kids write instead of optic. So eye is optic. Ear, auditory. And for too many years, I've seen the kids mix that up. So please concentrate. Don't rush. At least take 20 minutes to do section A. And once you're done with section A, do it thoroughly. Don't go back and recheck because most of you, you change your correct answers and you start doubting yourself. Right. One to six. A disease characterized by the G degeneration of brain cells and memory loss. Degeneration, wasting away of brain cells, which are neurons. We know we only learned one disease, and that is Alzheimer's, where the neurons get damaged. But one to seven, the inner layer of the uterus that thickens during the menstrual cycle. Inner layer, we know, is the endometrium. Again, very important, know this term well. 1 to 8. A hollow ball of cells that forms during embryonic development. The hollow ball of cells, we should know, is the blastocyst. And of course, I've seen in many memos, they also accept blastula. I always remember blastocyst. That's the word. So you learn the word that is easy for you to remember and most importantly, the one that you can spell. 1 to 9. The period of development of secondary sexual characteristics in humans. So when do secondary sexual characteristics in humans develop? Obviously, during puberty. And then the last question, 1.2.10. The type of vision where both eyes are used to focus on an object. Where you use two eyes, both your eyes, to focus on one object. So you have two eyes. And so because you have two eyes, the type of vision you have is binocular vision. I've seen in some papers they've also accepted stereoscopic. So you learn the word again that's easy for you to remember. It's easy for me to remember binocular because we have two eyes. So bi means two. Right. So that was the terminology in the paper. Now let's go and look at the next question. Matching columns 1.3. Indicate whether each of the descriptions in column 1 apply to A only, B only, both A and B or none of the columns in column 2. You must write A only, B only, both A and B or none next to the question numbers. So you write your question numbers and then you answer appropriately. Now, let's look at 1.3.1. The plant hormone that stimulates the germination of seeds. Now we know the germination of seeds is caused by gibberellin. So your answer should be A only. 1.3.2. The part of the brain that connects the left and the right hemispheres. This came out also in the November of paper. So the part of the brain that connects the two hemispheres, we know that's the corpus callosum, right? 1.3.3, the liquid found in front of the lens in the eye. So it's easy to remember. In front of the lens, A comes first, A comes before V. So the aqueous humor is found in the front of the eye and not the vitreous humor. So your answer is B only. And those matching columns and answers were quite easy. Right, let's move to now question four. Right, question 1.4. 1.4. I really like this question when I saw it. The diagrams below show part of the eye under different conditions. Now, yeah, if you look at the eye, you must really know accommodation and pupillary, pupillary mechanism very well for you to understand this question. Right. So 1.4.1, name the process that occurs when the curvature of the lens changes to focus on a near or distant object. Now, whenever you see near or distant object, that term, that process is accommodation. B, name the process that occurs when the pupil size changes to control, regulate the amount of light entering. So amount of light entering the eye, we should know that is pupillary mechanism. Now, 1.4.2. Give the letters of the two diagrams that represent the condition of the eye of a person. So they want letters only of two diagrams. So if you look and see, each is two marks, so you need to have two letters in dim light. Dim light, mm -hmm. we know the pupil will be more dilated. So this whole ear that I'm pointing to with the laser, that's the pupil. So in dim light, the pupil dilates to allow more light in. So that answer will be B and D. Focuses on a distant object. Here, yeah. we know focusing during a distant object, 
it's very easy to see the lens will be less convex. So less convex or easier terms, flatter lens. That's a distant object, so your answer will be A and B. 1.4.3. Give the letters of two diagrams that represent the eye of a person whose ciliary muscles are contracted. Now, you should know ciliary muscles contract in near vision. Now, how will you be able to tell the, which of the pictures are showing near vision? The lens is more convex or more rounder. So your answer is C and D. And then the last one, B, where the radial muscles are relaxed. Now, you know the radial muscles are relaxed in bright light. So bright light, what will happen to the pupil? The pupil must be more constricted or closed to let less light in. So your answer is A and C. This is a very lovely question. Make sure you go over this question. Make sure you master this because here you need to know the processes to be able to apply it. And it's quite scary that this is in question 1.4. It's in section A. So learn your work well. Question 1.5. Diagram 1 below represents part of a reflex arc, so that's a reflex arc, and diagram 2 represents a neuron. Now that, if you remember your work, we asked you to learn how to draw a motor neuron and a sensory neuron. Here you'll know that this is a sensory neuron. Right. 1.5.1, they want you to identify layer E, and layer E is the one that's surrounded around or surrounds F. So we should know that layer is the myelin sheet. Make sure you know how to spell this. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but this question and this label comes out all the time. B. Structure F. We know the myelin sheet is around the axon. Right. 152. Which neuron A, B, or C represents the type of neuron shown in diagram 2? Diagram 2 is a sensory neuron. Now let's look at the pathway. We know the sensory neuron transmits the impulse to the spinal cord. The B will be the interneuron, C will be the motor neuron. So, of course, your answer is A. A represents the sensory neuron. Which neuron A, B, or C is damaged when a person can feel but cannot respond? So, you can feel the stimulus but you cannot respond to the stimulus. So, obviously, the impulse is not going to be traveling to the motor neuron because it's damaged and it won't get to the effector. It won't get to the muscle, so you cannot respond. So what is damaged? The motor neuron is damaged. And where is the motor neuron? C. Then, 153, give the letter and name of the part that ensures one directional flow of the impulse, meaning that allows the impulse to travel in one direction, sensory neuron, interneuron, motor neuron. And that obviously we can see is D and that gap or that part that allows the impulse to travel in one direction is a synapse. Well, thank you, Junior Takis. Thank you for joining me while we are doing the supplementary paper. I'm sure that you can admit that some of these questions are very nice and very, very challenging. So practice these papers. Make sure you go over them, master them, learn the type of questioning so that you're prepared for your prelim and your final exam.